Hey, 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 what's up, pilots? This is Nick from Part Time Pilot doing another video in our cross country checklist. So, the next step of our cross country checklist, we just found our total distance to climb, we found all our altitudes, our fuel at each checkpoint during climb, and then we just found our total distance to descend, and then we adjusted our checkpoints such that we had a checkpoint right at where we should start our descent. So now the next thing we need to do is, what about the checkpoints after that? How are we gonna know how much we've descended since the start of our descent to know what altitude we will be at? So we did this similarly in when we found the altitudes for climb checkpoints. It's the same concept, it's a little bit different. We're gonna use the fuel time distance to descend chart in reverse with a known distance value to back out our altitude. Okay, so let's get to it. So we're gonna use the same values and example as my last video that found the total distance to descend. So we're descending from a cruise altitude of 8,500 to a, a altitude of 1,543. Now this is a, our destination airport's traffic pattern already corrected for pressure altitudes. Remember when we use our fuel time distance to descend chart, it has to be in a pressure altitude. So we've already done that conversion. We took the AGL of the traffic pattern, added that to the elevation of the air, airport, and then we converted it using the expected altimeter setting to get our pressure altitude. Okay, so let's talk about our last few checkpoints of this flight. So checkpoint nine, this is where we begin our descent, okay? And we begin it at a cruise altitude of 8,500, and we know the temperature is eight degrees Celsius. Checkpoint 10, this is nine nautical miles from checkpoint nine and nine nautical miles into our descent. Now we don't know the altitude and we don't know the temperature because in order to know temperature, we have to know the altitude. We have to be able to look at winds aloft and interpolate in winds aloft the temperature. We don't know either of those. We know our final altitude, which is our destination traffic pattern. That's six, na six nautical miles away from checkpoint 10 and 15 nautical miles total from the start of our descent. And we know the final altitude is 1,543 and we know that the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So this is kind of what it looks like. All right, so we have checkpoint nine here where we start our descent. It's, and here's the values here. And then checkpoint 10, nine nautical miles away. We don't know the temperature. We don't know the altitude. And then we have our landing airport which is again, six nautical miles away from checkpoint 10. And we know that we're going to the traffic pattern altitude and it's 30 degrees Celsius there. Okay, so in order to get altitude, so we can use our fuel time distance to descend chart in reverse, we need to get, we need a temperature. So we can, we don't know the temperature since we don't know an exact altitude, but we can estimate. So we can estimate a temperature. All right, so we know that our ground, our landing temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. We know our cruise temperature we're at our start of descent is eight degrees Celsius. And we know that it takes 15.1 nautical miles to descend from this temperature at cruise to this temperature, okay? So checkpoint nine is nine nautical miles into our descent. Or in other words, it's nine out of 15.1 into our descent or 60% of our total descent. So if we assume that the temperature changes also by 60% of the total temperature change, which is 22 degrees, then we can just do 60, find 60% 60 of 22, and it's a very quick estimate estimation of the temperature. So, okay, so 22 degrees from eight degrees to 30 degrees, and at 60% of that, 0.6, zero times 22 is about 13 degrees so we know it changes 13 degrees from 8 plus 13 so we know it changes 13 degrees to about 21 degrees celsius so that's our estimated temperature let's remember that now to find the altitude at checkpoint 10 as well as the fuel time fuel and time to get to checkpoint 10 we can use our fuel time distance to descend chart okay so for altitude, we know the distance to checkpoint 10 from checkpoint nine, and we can use the chart in reverse with distance value to back out altitude with our now estimated temperature. At the same time, we can copy down the fuel and time and then get those same values at checkpoint nine and our final destination 
then find the differences to find the fuel and time to reach each checkpoint. Now, I do not use the fuel time distance to descend chart to get fuel and time because I like to wait until I have a ground speed. And then once I have a ground speed, I use that to estimate my time, to get my time. And then I use my time with a fuel consumption rate to get my fuel. I think that's more conservative and a little bit more accurate than uh, eyeballing those charts. Okay, so let's focus on getting this altitude. All right, so to get this altitude, we need to start with a known distance. But we gotta remember that the fuel time and distance to descend chart, the true distance to descend to a checkpoint is found by finding the difference between two values. So, the dis so we find a distance value on the chart from our first checkpoint and then we find a distance value from the chart on our second checkpoint. We find the difference between the two, and that is the distance it takes to travel from one to the other, to descend from one to the other, okay? Now, we know that distance to descend from one to the other, but we don't know those distance values. So, in order to do this, we're going to have to do three steps, all right? So, step one, determine the distance value at our start of descent, checkpoint nine, from our field time distance to descent chart. Okay, so we need that distance value from the chart. Step two, determine the distance value to use for checkpoint 10 by subtracting the distance from checkpoint nine to checkpoint 10 from the distance value we found in step one. Now I'll explain why we do this, okay? That'll give us the distance value from the chart of checkpoint 10. Then step three, once we have the distance value for checkpoint 10, we can use that to use the chart in reverse to back out with our estimated temperature to back out in altitude. All right, so let's go to step one. So we're gonna find the distance value from our chart at the start of our descent. So we know that it's eight degrees Celsius at our cruise altitude of 8,500. So we start at eight degrees Celsius, we draw a line straight up to 8,500. Once we're there, we draw a horizontal line all the way over through each one of these three curves. And then since we're just gonna focus on distance right now, where it intersects the distance curve, we draw a straight line down, and we read off from the x-axis what that value is, and that is our distance value for the top of our descent. So we know from step one now that our distance value for the checkpoint nine, the top of our descent is 20 nautical miles. Step two, now we gotta find the checkpoint number 10 distance value. So we know that checkpoint 10 is nine nautical miles away from checkpoint nine. So if we do the formula that I said previously, 20, which is this distance value, minus the distance from checkpoint nine to checkpoint 10, which is nine. So 20 minus nine equals 11 nautical miles. Now that is the distance value we are gonna use for checkpoint 10 and in step three. Now let me explain why it's 20 minus nine equals 11. Okay, why are we doing 20 minus nine? Okay, we have to do it this way in order to use the chart in reverse, okay? Normally, we would, when we use these charts, we take the distance from the chart at cruise altitude and then subtract from it the distance from the chart at checkpoint 10's altitude to get the distance from checkpoint 10 to checkpoint 9. So what we do is we do distance value at number 9 minus the distance value from the chart at number 10 equals the distance between number 9 and number 10. Okay, so that's how we normally use the chart. Make these some variables. Let's say distance value at number nine is, is A, distance value at number 10 is B, and distance value, the, and distance between number nine and 10 is C, okay? So now, since we don't know checkpoint 10's altitude, we can't get its distance value from the chart, okay? But we do know the distance value from nine and 10 already. So we know C right here. Okay, value C. So we can just rearrange the equation to find the distance value of number 10s. So our original equation was A minus B equals C. So distance value at the top of descent minus the distance value of our next checkpoint equals the distance between the two checkpoints, okay? So usually we don't know C and we're finding C, but now we know C. We know the distance between number nine and 10. We don't know B. So we just solve the equation for B, oops, so if we solve the equation for B, we get B equals A minus C, okay? So now A is the distance value at 
number nine, and C is the distance between number nine and number 10. So this is what we found in step one, A, the distance value at number checkpoint nine, and then the distance value between nine and 10 is nine up here. So 20 minus nine equals B, which is 11, okay? So now that we know B, 11, that's the distance value for our chart at number 10, checkpoint 10. Now we can use the chart in reverse. So what we do is we find 11 over here on the axis. We draw a line straight up until we hit our distance curve, okay? Once we do that, we draw a horizontal line all the way over. Now, if you remember, our estimated temperature was 21 degrees. We find that on this axis over here draw a line up until we meet our horizontal line and then right at their intersection we can read off an altitude from these curves so it's just on the 4,000 feet curve so it's just about an altitude of 4,000 feet so we know now that we're gonna start our descent here at 8,500 and we're gonna descend for nine nautical miles to an altitude of 4,000 and we can keep our estimated temperature. It's probably pretty close, but what I like to do is now that we have this altitude, I like to go back in winds aloft. And so you would have a temperature at 3000 and we would have a temperature at 6,000 feet. And I would interpolate for the temperature at 4,000 feet to get a little more accurate temperature. And there you have it. That is how you find you back out the altitude from the fuel time distance to descent chart. Now, we know everything about our climb. We know everything about our descent as far as altitudes, temperatures, and distances go. And now we're just going to calculate speeds in our next videos. And then finally, once we have speeds, we can correct for winds to get ground speeds. And then once we have ground speeds, we can find the time it takes to fly this cross-country course. And then finally, the fuel we're going to use. And that's it, people. And then we'll finish it off with our uh, landing and takeoff performance charts all right so thanks for watching if you have any questions please comment below and as always please remember to follow me on instagram at part period time period pilot 